These are custom-made shift headphones, created using a 3D printer. And you could win these cool cans, but more on that later. Isn't it incredible what you can make with 3D printer these days? Guns, for example, and even artificial human organs. The potentials of 3D printing, today on SHIFT. <music> 3D printers can produce amazing stuff. Replacement beaks for eagles, platform shoes, and even delicious looking pies. And now, high-end 3D printers even use rays of light. But more on that later in the show. Basically, all 3D printers melt and shape source material into a desired three-dimensional form. The material dries and voila, you're done. And the good news is, 3D printers for home use are reasonably priced as well. The 3D printer industry is booming. According to industry experts Wohlers, six years ago companies in this sector generated 2.7 billion euros. In 2015, they made 4.4 billion euros and last year a staggering 8.1 billion. Now experts expect the sector to make an eye-watering 20 billion euros in 2020. To help protect the region's gorgeous corals from climate change, the Maldives have installed 3D printed artificial reefs. And the fashion industry is also making use of the technology, creating shoes and accessories from scratch. Even major fashion brands are on board. Sylvia Weidenbach is a pioneer in this field, experimenting with various colorful synthetic resins. She says anyone can use 3D printers as long as they select and use the input materials properly. It depends on how you use, refine and combine different materials. Belgian 3D printing company i.materialize, for example, has found a way to recycle plastic waste and turn it into glasses frames, which, by the way, are fully recyclable. We also want to make sure that the sunglasses never become waste again. So customers can swap their sunglasses for a new pair, while we recycle the old frames and 3D print new sunglasses from them. 3D printing tech is revolutionizing the healthcare sector as well. Philip Barluchka, for instance, produces tailor-made prosthetic arms that fit perfectly. He was never quite satisfied with the other manufacturer's artificial limbs. And who knows, maybe more of us will be living in 3D houses. The first 3D printed buildings have already gone up in France and Denmark, as well as in Texas, where these icon homes are quick to build and cost only about 10,000 euros to make. Wow, mind-blowing technology. This replica of a Star Wars robot was also made using a 3D printer. But how does this technology actually work? Well, there are many different printing methods and materials to choose from. Concrete and synthetic resin, for example. The 3D printer liquefies material and then prints it layer for layer through a special jet. To do this, the printer follows a digital construction plan. Sounds complicated? It's not really. Need to replace a chess piece or a screw? No problem. Just fire up the 3D printer and make one. A common 3D printing method is Fused Deposition Modeling, or FDM. This is the FDM method. The printer works a bit like a hot glue gun. We've got the plastic on this coil leading into this feeder. It's connected to this tube, which leads down here. And down here, we've got a printer head, where the plastic is heated to 220 degrees Celsius. And then the printer deposits the material layer by layer, creating the model. Stereolithography, or SLA, is another widespread 3D printing method. The SLA printer uses a laser and liquid plastic, which reacts to UV light. Down here we've got the laser, which is directed upwards through this tank. The synthetic resin then hardens. Up here is the bill plate, which the resin will then stick to. 
close the lid and off you go. You can download 3D printing blueprints or devise your own using special software. The more elaborate the software, the greater your possibilities. After this step, the blueprint is translated into machine code using so-called machine slicer software. This code can then be transferred to the printer using a regular USB flash drive or SD card. The pros of FDM methods are that printing materials and maintenance are cheap. The cons are that surface textures can be rougher. And what you print won't be as sturdy, so not as durable as items made with SLA. The advantages of SLA printing are smoother surfaces and sturdy builds. The disadvantage is that this technology is quite expensive in terms of materials and maintenance. So while 3D printing may look simple, it does require a fair bit of preparation and know-how. Our custom-made shift headphones, for example, were made on a 3D printer using 140 milliliters of synthetic resin. The printing process took 12 hours. And one of you lucky people could win them. How? Just tell us what you think of our new show. Do you like the look? How do you find our host? And what about the topics? Let us know. Printing whatever you want sounds like the epitome of freedom. But there's a dark side to this technology as well like blueprints for making your own firearms, uploaded to the internet by the US gun lobby. All you need to print a gun is a suitable 3D printer and 70 euros worth of aluminum powder. So 3D printing is clearly a double-edged sword. Stefan Ritter is an engineer and innovation expert. He knows a lot about this topic. It's actually easier to buy a gun, whether legally or illegally, than to print one. Printing a firearm will give you a plastic gun that can shoot a single bullet, and which is as dangerous for the shooter as for the target. There are 3D printers for metal, but these are very expensive and also don't produce sturdy weapons. But 3D printers do make it easier to replicate individual parts and entire machines as well as create cheap knockoff copies that could hurt manufacturers tremendously. U.S. market research firm Gartner projects that 3D printing piracy could cost companies up to 90 billion euros. 3D printing is used mainly in industry, for example, for making customized items such as artificial limbs. 3D printing also makes producing prototypes easier, cheaper and more sustainable. And it's useful for the spare parts market as well. This technology is used to make a lot of spare parts and carry out repairs. Because spare parts needed in industry are difficult to come by and use lots of resources. So I think this technology will shape society because it helps industry become more sustainable. 3D printing is part of a DIY and repair culture. And I think society will be receptive to and foster this culture. But the German Environment Agency has warned that 3D printers use plastics that harm the environment and can emit toxic fumes during printing. Some experts say the harmful side effects of 3D printing like poisonous emissions and more plastic waste will vanish over time. And many tech pioneers believe that 3D printing could solve some of the world's most urgent problems, making it a cleaner, better place to live in. Although that needs much larger 3D printers than the ones you'd use in your living room. The future of 3D printing may have been written at the University of California, Berkeley, where researchers developed a way to make 3D printing 100 times faster. Instead of layering liquid materials, their method uses a laser to warm up and solidify liquid resin. This ultra-precise method is still in its early stages, but it's hoped it could be used in mass production someday. Also, Berlin-based company Cellbricks is pushing the envelope of 3D printing. They're developing a method of printing organs by layering cells on top of each other. 
through cell division, a parent cell divides into daughter cells. These are then glued together and so forth. The company has already managed to print mini organs using this process. In the long term, we want to establish something that helps keep people alive. That's what motivates us. Experts also regard 3D printing as a key spaceflight technology. It could allow rocket engines to be manufactured at a far lower cost than today. A German company is already devising a process for welding together ultra-thin sheets of metal with 3D printers. And Europe's space agency, ESA, is looking into using 3D printing robots to build entire moon villages. Science, be it also business, even tourism, or mining, or whatever, to put them together on the same place. And this is the idea of the moon village. Astronomers hope that this technology could, someday, maybe even make a Mars mission possible. Clever stuff. Futurologist Stefan Richter thinks 3D printing has an additional advantage. It brings people together in labs and hubs to work with 3D printers and be creative as a team. Which is not only fun, but also great for the environment. It's about creating things for yourself, being sustainable and thinking about how to repair objects. Just imagine, your old vacuum cleaner stops working because a small plastic screw has gone missing. Instead of buying a new cleaner or taking the old one to a repair shop, I just download the necessary data, print it out and repair the old cleaner myself. If necessary, using a YouTube tutorial. Wouldn't that be a great money-saving idea? Using a 3D printer to repair things instead of throwing them away is a great way to boost sustainability. But on the other hand, product piracy and printing guns sounds pretty frightening. So what do you make of 3D printing technology? A futuristic idea? A potential threat? Or just a gimmick? Tell us what you think on Facebook or on DW.com. Goodbye. Glad you could join us and hope to see you again next week.